Do you practice much? Do you sit at home shredding along to ride the lightning by Metallica or anything? No, 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 no. You know, I can do what I do. I only played lead in Oasis because no one else could do it and Bonehead was bald and that would have been fucking preposterous. My name is John Doran and I write about music. This is a new series of British Masters for Noisy. In the last series, I interviewed such luminaries as Brian Ferry, Johnny Marr and John Lydon. In this series, I will be interviewing other notable figures from the field of popular music. At first, it might not be immediately obvious what links these characters, other than the fact that they all feature heavily in my record collection. But as the series progresses, I hope it will become clear that all of these disparate figures are outliers in their field. Today, I am talking to Noel Gallagher, who rose to unshakable prominence with Oasis, one of the biggest rock groups the world has ever produced. Noel Gallagher is today what he was right from the start, a bona fide rock and roll star. It's my pleasure to introduce Noel Gallagher. Hi. Hello. If I was a gambling man, I would lay money on um, Chasing Yesterday being your ninth successive platinum selling record. I mean, it's comfortably on the way to doing that already. Don't you pass a point where you think, do you know what? I've kind of made my point with rock music. Does it never occur to you to say, I think I'm going to go and spend two years in Indonesia studying Gamelan, or I'm going to start releasing anonymous grime records or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> if you're a songwriter or a composer, you're kind of in it for life. I enjoy the writing, although it can be very frustrating when it's not happening, but I do enjoy that. I genuinely don't know what I would do. Some people in some quarters give you stick for being like a formulaic songwriter, but I'd say um, Chasing Yesterday is kind of progressive really, isn't it? So, um, so well. Relatively speaking. What does that mean, anyway? What does it mean? And who, 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 are, who are some people? The Guardian? Who gives a fuck about The Guardian? Well, everybody's got an opinion anyway, do you know what I mean? But um, no, I, don't, I don't really think about it too much. If it, so if it sounds good to me, I put it out there. I'm not begging people to come and see me or buy it or anything like that. If my audience, if such a thing exists, gets it, that's great. And if they don't, that's great too, you know what I mean? I kind of like it. But you know what? That's exactly what I did think when I heard Chasing Yesterday. I did think, fucking hell, the right stuff is amazing. And I think that's like one of the best songs you've ever written. I think it's better than anything off like, what's the story? I agree, it's as far away from supersonic as you're ever going to get. You know, I suppose if you listen to one after the other, you would think, well, is that the same songwriter? But if you've kind of been doing it for 20 odd years, yeah. it's just the next logical thing. Now, people have said to me since that, oh, wow, I can't wait to hear your next record. And I was like, well, why? You know, I haven't written it yet. And they're like, well, it sounds like you're going. And it's like, don't well, fucking get, but I don't get bogged down in where it might be going. You know what I mean? I just, it's all about the songs. You know, it's all about the songs. If the songs are good, the vibe of it. I'm not, I'm not interested in the vibe, you know what I mean? So you worked with um, Johnny Marr on The Ballad of Mighty Eye, um, which is a great track, but obviously he's been a supporter of you and Oasis since day one, hasn't he? How did you meet him originally? Well, he was the f I met him through this lad I always used to see at the Hacienda. I never knew his name. It was just a lad I was on nodding terms with. I bumped into him one day when I was coming back from HMV and I just bought the The's album, Dusk, and I bumped into him in the street. And that's the first time I'd ever seen him outside of the Hacienda. And we chatted away about things and I obviously had an HMV rag. And uh, he said, oh, my, my kid plays on that. And I was like, who's your kid? And he said, oh, Johnny. And I was like, wow. And then, we, and then it, he, he got to that I was in a band called Oasis and he said, oh, give us your demo tape and I'll play it to our kid. I must have gone home and got it for him, and then about two hours later he called me. Johnny Marr called me on my phone. And he was the first person to ever get it out of the five people in the band and the five people who hung around the band. Um, and I remember on the second, <laughs> the second night that I met him, he took us out for a Japanese meal, him and his missus Anne's. I'd never had a Japanese meal before. And uh, we went back to his house, his fucking massive house in, in South Manchester. And, uh, it was just 
great. And then it was a funny thing, because the very next day, we had a gig in Glasgow, and it was the gig at King Tut's. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. And then the day after that, it was my birthday, so that was a fucking good weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about this on the way down here, and I was thinking like one of the earliest songs by You Lot as Oasis that I've heard is your cover of Cartouche Feel the Groove. Better let you know, is yeah. it? So like, you know, for, for people who don't know that, it's like essentially like a kind of Oasis, kind of shoegazy cover of a house song, which yeah. was po popular at the Hacienda, wasn't yeah. it? house music. Fucking hell, I've just been listening to it today. They drive my neighbours fucking mad. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. When the, the Acid House thing started in 87, it fucking blew my mind. And it continues to do so, it's great. What was your first pill like, did it? Little yellow New York, yeah, it's great, yeah. Not as good as my last one. <laughs> 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 so like in the modern kind of, um, popular music environment, like the, the guitar solo, it's almost something of anachronism these days. You know, you don't hear them that often, especially on the radio or whatever. And of course your record's peppered with them. What to you is like the perfect guitar solo? What's the one that you, you really wish you'd written it? Comfortably Numb is by far and away one of the greatest guitar solos of all time. Saying that, you gotta go somewhere to beat Jimmy Page's riffs. I mean, to come up with the best riff of all time in A Whole Lot of Love is something else, and then that guitar solo in Stairway to Heaven is great. But I don't really get hung up on guitar solos. I, I'm, I'm, on, there's some great ones on my record. I would hazard a guess if you pulled out the great ones, it's not me playing them. I think there's nine on the record. I might have played three out of the nine. The last official bit of new music that Oasis um, released, as far as I'm aware anyway, was Falling Down, the monstrous psychedelic mm. bubble mix done by the genius pair of producers, Amorphous Androgynous. <laughs> cahoots with them for a while, weren't you, working on a space rock album, mm. but it's, I believe it's not coming out. What, what went wrong there? It got finished. The album got finished. I spent a lot of time working on it, but the way that they work is, was to get me in and play, 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 play all day, and then they would take it away. And then the next thing you'd hear, you'd just go, oh, well, that's not what I was thinking. Do you know what I mean? And it became apparent to me <laughs> that they weren't making a record for me. I was making a record for them. Yeah. And if anybody who does know me, that's not going to fucking work. Don't you think, though, that that album is going to end up being your let it be, get back tape, it's going to be your smile. Do you not think that this is the album that people are going to be like, I've got to hear it, where's the bootleg of it? Well, there is no bootleg because I own the master and I destroyed it. Really? Yeah. My manager's not even heard it. I wouldn't play it to them. I was so, it was so underwhelming to me that I just couldn't, I've never played it to anybody. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put records out to please people and their imagination. And then you hear it and go, actually it is a bit shit. It's like, I, f I know it's shit, you know, so it's not coming out and that's the end of it. So in 30 years time, you're not gonna be at the Royal Albert Hall with your feet in a box of sand and the piano, amorphous androgynous coming on stage on Zimmer frames. So. I wouldn't have thought so. In 30 years time, I'll be 77. Fucking hell, please tell me I won't be fucking playing the Albert Hall at 77, Jesus.
What's the story behind Purple Parallelogram, the, the Evan Dando song? Oh, as I recall it, we were just fucking around in an hotel room. Loads of us wrote that song. Who else was there? Liam, Bona, everyone that was on that tour. And I think we finished it off in, a, in, a, in the bar of the Columbia Hotel. And I know Evan, I've seen him recently, and he's a fucking great lad. But he kind of, he kind of, when we'd written this song, we just thought we were messing around, just like lads yeah, playing yeah. guitars. The next thing, somebody sends us a finished version that he'd gone and recorded, and we were like, whoa, hang on a minute, fucking hell. If it was like cigarettes and alcohol, you know, it would have been great, but it was a bit shit. Purple parallel. Tell me more about this idea, this seemingly, you know, what would have been 20 years ago, this seemingly implausible idea that you and Damon Alban might record an album together. So we met up one night purely by chance and blah, 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 had a beer and was like, fucking hell, what's all that about, fucking blah, 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 and all that. And then, as I would say to a friend of mine, next time you're not busy, we should go for a drink. It was like that, that was it. Turns out, He's quite a genial fellow, you know, as, as am I, so he's, we get on all right. <laughs> 